never been done before, live in action. The best tier list squat variations and accessories while I'm squatting. So you wanna know how to improve your squats, grow some legs, tune in, subscribe, like this thing, let's dive in. So if you have a poverty squat, tune in. You wanna squat five, six, 700 pounds. I've squatted 600 pounds in competition and I've led some big boys to over 800 pound squats. So I know a thing or two about squatting. Narrow stance squats. Now I think for a lot of people, something like a narrow stance squat or just moving your stance in slightly more narrow could be a decent variation to build up your quads depending on how you move. Obviously the quads are one of the main movers and the top limiters on how we're squatting. Um, so I would say a narrow stance squat. I'll probably put in like the B tier. It's not gonna make or break it. You're not gonna add it into your, sprinkle it into your program and all of a sudden be a god um, because we can still catch volume for our quads on something like a leg press, a belt squat, Bulgarian, something other than the competition squat. And anytime we're moving our stance or moving our technical form on the real squat, it may slightly take away practice from our competition style squat. Um, squat of the big three or actually probably any movement in the game is one of the most technically difficult because you got balance, the weight's on your back, uh, bar path is all very, very difficult. There's a lot of nuances to how to stay tight in the squat. So as much as you can practice your comp squat, the better. Narrowing your squat is still great, but it does take away slightly from the practice. So we'll say B tier for now. So next we got wide stance. Obviously this is all relative to how your normal stance is. I don't see a ton of value in widening your stance. Obviously everyone shows or talks about range of motion when they're talking about the deadlift or sumo cheating. But if that was the case, everyone would be squatting wide as shit and they simply don't. There's just not a ton of value that I personally see in the wide stance squat. Probably put it down there with the D's and F's. Um, not something I would program for mo most people, 99% of folks. Next on the list, we got the front squat. And though I enjoy the front squat, and I think it has a lot of value for general athletics, it's fun. Uh, I think it can work your quads a lot. Obviously the front, the load is, load in the front of your body. It works a lot of your core, um, really like anti-flexion of the core, your erectors, your abs. Um, but if you're just focused on improving your back squat, it's probably not the play. Um, again, we can load our quads in different ways through dumbbells, body weight, leg press, Bulgarians, other methods, right? When we're thinking about any kind of programming, we have like the goal, and we have one or two exercises that directly hit that stimulus for that goal. Then we have variations of that. Then we have accessories to that. And so if we're a power lifter or just a strength athlete in general, and we wanna improve our squat, number one is squat. It's that simple. Um, you can choose a variation or two from there, and then accessories, which we'll dive into. I think the list has both. Unless you're an Olympic weightlifter, a regular athlete, or just a gym enthusiast meathead, I think everyone should be able to front squat and figure out a front rack. But if you're just trying to improve your back squat, competition squat, I'm sorry to all my friends out there, it's probably, it's probably in the D. We're probably in the D. Ow. Owie. Pause squat. I actually think it's probably one of the most versatile variations. When we're talking about choosing a variation or getting better at anything in life, this law goes across all borders. It's called the law of specificity, right? If you want to get good at something, you got to do something similar. So, calm squat, up, down, hit depth. Pause squat, just slightly pausing at the bottom, is literally as close as you can get to the main variation. So, in my opinion, it's probably an A or S tier variation of the squat. Biggest factor, try not to gather any rebound. We're trying to take out of that rebound the reflex of our hamstrings and our quads. So if you pause, first movement should be straight up. A lot of people pause and then they'll bury back down to get some rebound. That's the whole point of taking that out. So we'll pause to find positioning, tightness, but we'll also pause to be a self-limiter. You can't squat max volume, max weights every single day. We'll get too torn down. Doing something heavy and hard with a pause allows us to train hard every single day without maxing out overall systemic fatigue. Zercher squats are something that uh, a lot of people kind of do now as like a circus move, but it was quite common in kind of the geared west side days as a variation. Somewhere in between a front squat, an RDL, and like a good morning, 
Um, old school, like a real zercher, you're taking it from the ground, you're hooking your elbows in as a hook, and you're pulling and you're going to standing. Other zerchers, we used to use like handles, it would be like this medieval torture sex device, and I have some pegs down here like this, and you lay the bar in it, and you get on the rack like that. And that, like you get really tired and like really generally strong, you're building your glutes, you're building your low back, you're building your upper back, and you can load some weight on there. Like I probably zerchered 500 pounds. I got powerful hips, but if we're talking about building the squat, the strength will come from the specificity of the movement. So we need to build the skill of squatting, and while building the skill of squatting, we can build the strength of squatting. I think zergers are probably not worth it for 95% of athletes, even other strength athletes. I'd probably look at a good morning or an RDL before that, a kettlebell swing if we're trying to get a little bit more dynamic with it. Um, fun movement, maybe something you should try. I think you all need to try some hard shit. But if I'm you know, lining things up to be as optimal as I can, to be a better squatter, Zercher's probably in the program. Down with the D, down with the D, my boy. So the, the, the camber bar became popular probably because of West Side Barbell. Uh, it does alleviate some shoulders, right? Because you can go lower rather than you have to get cocked up all the time. The bar cambers. And when you're doing box squats, which is very popular in the conjugate system, the bar will swing. So it'll be a little bit of stability issues because you're sitting back, it'll swing a little bit and you got to balance yourself. For the free squat, I actually think it's kind of underrated. A lot of people maybe haven't used it or experienced it, so they can't speak on it. I used it hundreds of times. Um, it's almost easier and it's kind of cheating, but you can manipulate the weight itself so it sits over your midfoot better. Um, and in a way you can actually overload. I know people speak of overload with like reverse bands and all these and heavy walkouts where you would handle over your maximum. But if you're handling a cambered bar, then you might be able to handle one to 6% more than your max while alleviating some shoulder pain. Um, I think it's a really great option actually. So uh, am I putting it in every regular program? Probably not, but I think it's an amazing tool to have and probably one of the most underrated secrets because a lot of the newer generation has never really experimented with specialty bars. Majority of people just don't have that many issues with their shoulders and elbows, um, especially in the natty game, but other lifters might. And then if you're off season, you wanna give your shoulders a little bit of a break. I think it's a great tool and again, being able to manipulate it so it really sits over your front foot, I think is a great tool. So yeah, let's throw it in the bottom of B. So the safety squat bar known as the SSB um, kind of forces the weight. It has a light camber itself towards the front of you. And then again, alleviates the shoulders, has some pads. Um, so you don't have to use your upper body as much in the squat. Again, I think, you know, it's probably one and a half, one step, half a step away from your comp squat. If you're in an off season, if you're just trying to build your legs better in general, I think it's a great piece. It really works your upper and mid back. Uh, you can really focus on your quads, really focus on pu pushing. Uh, you can do something called like the Hatfield squat also where you use your hands on a stable surface, similar to something like a belt squat machine, and you can really overload your legs and not worry about balance as much. So as an accessory, not a variation, I think it's probably A tier. As a variation, it might be in the B tier. Really solid, great movement in the off season. But again, it's maybe a little bit too far away from uh, your comp squat. And we talked about kind of the differences between variations, which very closely emulate the move, and something like an accessory that maybe builds muscle uh, to help then raise the bottom level of our strength. And that's where the Bulgarian split squat comes in. Absolutely S tier movement in my opinion, as an accessory. I wouldn't call it a variation. It's more of like a bodybuilding hypertrophy accessory is the most common term, or supplemental lift. So you can really build muscle, raise that foundation. You can do it with a more vertical shin and work on your hammies and glutes. You can tuck that heel back in, get a, a positive shin angle, which means my knees are heading more towards my toes and really focus on that quad. Loading it's easy with kettlebells, dumbbells, or even a barbell. Using that safety squat bar as a load, as you get stronger for the Bulgarian, I think. So the box squat, it's actually a movement I really enjoy and I think it's misunderstood like many of us. Does that look like a heart? Yeah. <laughs> now, for raw powerlifting, it's two far steps, right? Because the whole goal of the box squat is to break up the eccentric and the concentric portion, right? Take away that elasticity, similar to the pause squat, except now we can really allow our body to relax on the box, although you're staying tight in your midsection. The other big goal is to keep a uh, neutral, if not negative, knee angle. Right, so shin angle is going backwards. Now we're really focusing on those hams 
As I'm sitting on the box, it's actually gonna be similar to this. And then I'm gonna hamstring curl myself back up. So different, too far away, too many variations from deviations, my statistical analysis, from the regular squat. Um, as a general strength builder, as a general movement, I think it's something you should have in your pocket. Strong men, uh, athletes, uh, even power lift lifters, if they're injured or things that we, you know, it's, it's a tool that we can implement here and there. But as the core of our training, 99.9% .9 of raw power lifters do not need the box squat. Wheezy F baby, down in the F tier. And the F is for that fucking sucks. The other one, a lot of these are kind of basis from the conjugate west side system because that system of training is what I grew up in. My direct mentors in powerlifting in my early, early days were there. A lot of people I interviewed, um, you know, 531 Wendler, Brandon Lilly, Matt Winning, Mark Bell, all these guys are west side uh, disciples or, or, or like number two guys are all at west side. That's who I learned under. I, I, I eventually got to learn under many other people like Eric Helms, Bryce Lewis, um, Lane Norton, many others that I've interviewed, but the original core I learned from was the West Side because that's all that was dominating powerlifting. Um, bands and chains, accommodating resistance, allows you to explode in the movement. All movements get harder at the top using them and they're lighter at the bottom. So again, for athletes, um, even for some raw power lifters, I do think there's time in the off season. Uh, off season, I'm, when I say that, I mean more than like the, the peaking block, so further away than like 12, 16 weeks. If you have a longer break in training before competition, I think there's something that you can really use to, again, control the fatigue, have fun, which matters, get strong in different variations that don't uh, conflict with your regular form, and these are tools we can use. Chains, I think, are a tool that are probably underutilized that some people could use. Uh, it can allow you to be a little bit more explosive, cutting yourself through some of the weak points in your training or weak points in your lift where you tend to slow down. You can hopefully learn yourself to be slightly more explosive. The other point is that it can control and manage the overall fatigue. The overall bar weight you have to handle day in and day out can go down on one of your squat days if you're a higher frequency squatter. So uh, for that reason, I'll probably throw it in the middle tier of B. Uh, something you can use, but you have to learn how to use it correctly, when, why, and how. I would probably use it on my lighter day squats if I'm programming for most raw lifters. Our heavier day, we wanna be as specific as we can, or do something like a pause, which again is very close to it, maybe even a tempo, which isn't on the list, but I'll throw that in the S tier also. Three seconds going down, three seconds going up, maybe a one second pause in the bottom. Really allow you to control your bar speed, uh, your bar path, excuse me, and use the most specific as we can. The bands or the chains I would use on my secondary day where I'm handling you know, sets of three to five, maybe a little bit in the 60, 70% range or the RPE six to seven, where we're just trying to get some general volume and practice in. It's really good as a practice day. Um, and that's it, man. Hopefully that helps improve your squat. Hopefully you like the tier list. This one's a little bit more free flowing, a little bit more raw because I had to get a squat session in. New videos every single day, new content. Please, please, please like, subscribe. Appreciate y'all so much. Join the Discord, goodcompanydiscord.com for exclusives on clothing, early access, and like-minded community. Silent Michael, catch you in the next one, man. Be a part of something yourself, community and culture always. I'm out, y'all.